Okay, so just three more questions involving finding the domain. So in the previous video, we said that if you have a logarithm, the quantity inside of the logarithm has to be strictly greater than zero. So in this case, I'm just going to set up my inequality, x minus 3 greater than 0. Well, add 3 to both sides, and we get that x has to be greater than 3. So my domain would be from 3 to positive infinity. Uh, nothing too difficult there. Okay, 50 is a little bit more complicated because I see sort of two issues going on. I, I see this logarithm in the numerator. There's definitely going to be restrictions there. And I also see this radical in the denominator, so I know there's going to be restrictions there. So let's take it in the same order as before. So I guess let's just work with the numerator. So I know that the stuff inside of the logarithm, we said that has to be strictly greater than 0. So I've got x squared minus 100 greater than 0. And recall we said to solve quadratic inequalities, turn it into an equation, solve the equation. So I'm going to make this x squared equals 100. And if I take the square root of both sides, I'll get x equals positive and negative 10. And this is where we have to take the number line and test stuff from the number line. So again, I know that negative 10 won't work and positive 10 won't work because That'll give me the natural logarithm of 0 if I substitute either of those values in, and that's undefined. And I'm going to go a little bit faster. Now we have to take a test point from each interval. You know, say if I use x equals negative 100. Well, negative 100 squared minus 100, that's going to be a positive number. So those values will work. If I take something between negative 10 and 10, say x equals 0, well, in that case, I would get the natural logarithm of negative 100. That's going to be undefined, so those values don't work. And if I take something larger than positive 10, say, you know, x equals 100, well, again, then I'm going to get a positive number inside of my logarithm, so those values work. So these are the numbers from negative infinity to negative 10, and then 10 to infinity. Those are going to be the values that satisfy the domain for the logarithm. Now, we have to be careful, right, because we still have this radical in the denominator. So normally we said the stuff underneath a radical has to be greater than or equal to 0. But now, since it's in the denominator of my fraction, it has to be, I can't let it equal 0 either, because then I would have 0 in the denominator of my fraction. So what we need is, we need the quantity x minus 8 to be strictly greater than 0 in this case. Well, if we solve this, we just get that x has to be greater than 8. Okay, so, so here's positive 8. It has to be strictly greater than that. Now, what you're looking for for the domain, if you imagine making a number line, you're looking for the overlap of those two regions. I'm looking for numbers that are greater than 8 and also satisfy the, the domain for the logarithm. So they have to be greater than 8 and also in between negative infinity, negative 10, or greater than um, 10 to infinity. So the only numbers that are going to do that are going to be numbers that are strictly greater than 10. So the domain in this case will be from positive 10 out to infinity. That's the only, those are the only numbers that are going to satisfy the domain for both the logarithm and it's also going to uh, make the the numbers underneath the square root positive. Okay, so that's why I said in the previous video I think 50 is a little, maybe a little, a little more complicated, but again, hopefully not too bad. So last but not least, here's 51. We've got the square root of x plus the cube root of x. Okay, so we said for square roots, or really any even powered root, fourth root, sixth root, eighth root, the quantity underneath the radical has to be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so that's pretty easy to, to simplify. There's really nothing to do there. Now, notice here we've got a cube root. We've got an odd-powered root. And it's okay to have a, a negative number if it's an odd-powered root. You still get a real number. So from our second term, there are no restrictions. No restrictions on the domain from that second term. So in this case, our domain will just simply be all values from 0 to positive infinity. Again, we'll use brackets on the 0 to indicate that we can use 0.